Hello, this is Camera Weeks. Welcome to Tim's Daily Vlog. Today is Family Life with Several Palsy series number three, but it's actually a continuation of number one because number one talks about my perspective and I bring you all the way up to when Micah was born. And I will cover up to the first four and a half years of life. This is the only time frame I can probably give you exact time frames. And that is because we lived in Houston, Texas until Micah was four and a half, which would have been July of 92, and Micah's birthday is in October. So I can remember the things that happened in the house and the things that happened when we were in Houston. So I left you off on series one with when Micah was born, and she stayed overnight in the nursery because no one was checking her. Micah was a home birth, and I am guessing, we were guessing, that she probably stayed in there overnight. No one really paid any attention to her. They didn't think very highly of home births back then. I'm not sure what they think about them now. But anyway, it was the next morning when we learned that something was wrong with Micah. So 21 days later, we did bring Micah home. My in-laws worked downtown where the hospital was, and they went to see Micah every single day for 21 days when they would get off work, and that was very special to have someone. So I remember going to see a neurologist. I don't remember if Micah was one, if she was two, but she was very young. And I remember what this neurologist looked like. He was a very tall, gray-haired, very handsome gentleman. And I was very excited about going to this visit. And while I'm there, he tells me that Micah will never really be able to do anything and that she would pretty much be in a vegetable state and would never really progress. And I was just crushed and I start crying while I'm in there and he hands me a box of tissue and he says, I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know. And I left that doctor's appointment and I cried so hard while I was driving, I had to pull off the side of the road because I was just completely devastated by his words and his lack of sympathy and his lack of seeing Micah's progress. There was a time when Micah was just a few months old. I remember us going to Life Tabernacle in Houston, Texas, and one of our Bible College instructors, Sister Keating, was there, and she came and found me. Lee Stone King was there preaching, and she felt very impressed that we should take Micah up to the front and have him pray for her. And I don't remember anything about the prayer. I just remember us doing that. But I remember that as the weeks went by after that, Micah started doing very, very tiny things. And it's been too long to remember what they were. But they were very, very tiny things that seemed so big to me. And there were things that she hadn't done before. And I knew that God had touched her when we prayed. There have been a lot of prayers prayed over Micah. And I can tell you what has brought me up to where we are today is God. I have cried rivers and rivers of tears and it isn't because I've ever felt sorry for Micah. Micah has always been happy in between her in between her screaming when she was very, very young. She's always had that smile on her face that you see in today's videos and in pictures. But my tears have always been from the incredible amount of stress. There hasn't ever been anything as emotional and stressful as it has been taking care of Micah. And if you are currently taking care of a special needs child or someone in your family, I can't really offer you very much through the screen of a video, but what I can tell you is that God has been there with every tear that I've cried, and He holds every river that I have cried. And God has been wonderful. And if you don't pray, this might be a good time to see if God answers prayers. Because God answers us when we are sincere. And if you don't know if God exists and you pray a sincere prayer, He's going to hear you and He's going to show you that He's real. And I'm, I'm getting a little bit off track. I don't, I don't have a script. Every little tiny thing that Micah ever did was a really big deal. I remember when she first started eating green beans and pizza, she could eat some pizza that was cut up into little pieces. She was probably about four when she started being able to pick up a tiny little piece of food and feed herself. I remember when she was four and a half when we moved to Nebraska, 
spending literally six hours a day, I had Micah and I had Lauren, spending six hours a day feeding Micah. It took two hours to feed her breakfast. I would get her all cleaned up, take care of Lauren. Literally two hours later, it was time to do it again. Just all day long was at the dinner table. And it was just an incredible amount of time. I can't imagine going back and doing that all over again. But that's a little bit about what happened when Micah was little. And I know I'm kind of random on this video today, and as I think of things, I'll tell you more, and maybe I can figure out a way to be a little bit more, um, a little bit more concise in what I tell you. But it's just a few Micah stories just to tell you a little bit about Micah. So I hope you are having a wonderful day, and please do go join the conversation at TamaraWeeks.com. Make some comments. Ask me some questions if you have any, and I'll do my best to try to answer them and maybe remember what we did with Micah. But you have yourself a wonderful day, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.